Hey everybody, another Unmuted with Marsha and our guest today, very, very timely, Stephen Miller, who was senior advisor to President Trump and is now the founder of America First Legal. And I asked Stephen to join us today because he is one of the experts on illegal immigration, the policies around this and how we effectively stop illegal immigration into our country, how we stop people from devaluing our freedom and our citizenship. And as we've looked at this bill, this reconciliation bill, the Democrats have, we have found some very interesting provisions that deal with the issue of immigration and deal with the issue of green, green cards and workers and uh, what is going to happen in this component that is legal immigration. And Stephen, take it away. Let's talk about this issue. Thank you. Well, first of all, it's an enormous privilege to be on your program today. And I'd like to state, first of all, that all of your constituents in the great state of Tennessee are truly lucky to have you as a senator. So I can say, from personal experience, and you know this, when I was a staffer on Capitol Hill, I worked with your office back when you were in the House to try to stop what President Obama was doing to our country on the border and on immigration. And you were one of the most fearless leaders in the House of Representatives on that issue. I think it's a big part of the reason why you were elected overwhelmingly in the state of Tennessee. And I can tell you it is a rare commodity to have a senator that is so fiercely committed to American workers and American citizens. And so I just hope your constituents appreciate, and I know they appreciate, just how lucky they are to have a fighter like you in that Senate seat. So I just wanted to open by saying that. Um, secondly, on this bill, it is the most significant immigration rewrite since 1965. The year 1965 is important because that was the year when Ted Kennedy and others in Congress created the current system of chain migration that we're all very familiar with, while at the same time failing to do anything about border security. And we've been living with that system now for about 50 years. And even though there's been so much focus on the other deeply radical and Marxist provisions in what they're calling the Build Back Better plan, but this budget reconciliation bill, on taxes, on spending, on so-called equity or critical race theory, on energy, on climate, relatively little attention has been given to the immigration provisions, which are truly breathtaking in scope and would completely, completely reorder American society. So I'd like to just run through a couple of them real quickly. First, and simplest really, is a giant amnesty for most of the nation's illegal immigrant population. So for most people who are here illegally, whether because they crossed the border without authorization, which is a federal crime, or they came here on a temporary visa and then failed to exit at the legally required date, both of those groups, most of those people, millions will get amnesty under this bill and means effectively, as a practical matter, they'll be here forever. Secondly, is a very shocking provision, which I know you, Senator, have been very concerned about, which allows people to effectively buy American citizenship for a relatively small fee. And that is done through, and you referenced this, a green card. And for those who don't know, a green card is the document the US government gives you when it declares you to be a permanent resident of our society. And when you receive a green card, you basically are not deportable except for extremely serious crimes. And even that can be quite difficult in many instances. And you are on a five-year path to citizenship and have full access to, within five years, our welfare system, our healthcare system, so Medicaid, Medicare, you name it. Now, how does it do this? So under federal law, there are some categories of immigration that are expressly capped by law. Those categories include chain migration and foreign workers. So there's specific caps Congress has established on both of these in order to ensure that there isn't unlimited immigration, that there's some measure of control as every society has. In fact, a lot of people 
would argue, if anything, that the caps are too generous. And what this bill does is it says, even if you can't get into the country right away because there's a cap on chain migration or a cap on foreign worker migration for a fee of $2,500 for a family of chain migrants or for a fee of $5,000 for foreign workers, and that would primarily be in the, in the big tech space, you can get a green card, come to America, stay here for life. So literally an unlimited number of people can come into the country for this fee, be put on a path of citizenship, no special criteria, no merit-based sorting, no demonstration of any particular contribution. It's just give them money, get in. And in the, in the big tech context, which I really want to underscore, these large technology corporations that have billions and billions and billions of dollars, for them a $5,000 fee is nothing. And it will mean that if you're, say, a college student graduating in Tennessee and you want to go work for one of these big technology companies and make a great living and be able to support your family, they can just instead go get a foreign worker for much less than they would pay an American worker. And that, I think, is a great tragedy. And I'm frankly astonished that this has been put in the bill without any real national attention in getting to it. The last thing I'll mention, uh, there's a lot of immigration provisions, but the last thing that I'll mention in the bill is that it also allows people to get tax credits if they're here illegally. And that really is so radical. I mean, think about that. You have people today in, say, the Northern Triangle, right, Honduras, El Salvador, Guatemala, weighing about coming to the country illegally and thinking about, well, I have to pay a smuggler $6,000 or $7,000, so I want to do it. Now the calculation is, oh, this is great. If I have four young children and I pay a smuggler $7,000, my first year here, I can get $14,000 in tax credits from Uncle Sam. That will pay for the cost of the smuggling, plus we'll have an extra 7K left over. We're, these are, they should literally be called tax credits for smugglers. I mean, this is in the bill. It's just mind boggling to me. So those are, those are three provisions that I would like to highlight for you and your audience that just defy reason and common sense. Yeah, and you know, Stephen, they do defy any sort of reasoning when you look at this country and when you look at preserving this country and our freedoms and our sovereignty. But if you can go plop down 2500 and get a green card to come over here to try to work, then you're going to, and also get on a path to citizenship yep. with that then you're going to do that and not pay the smuggler $10,000. And the cartels are charging about $10,000 per person. Correct. That's the so cheapest way to do it. This is the way the Biden is, administration is going to be able to say, hey, we got the border under control and we have really been tough on these cartels. Well, know what you did was to open a door over here mm -hmm. where you're going to let people pay $2,500, say they're in legally, come in, get citizenship, and then reap the benefits That's of that point. citizenship. That's a really great point. Um, yes. I'll give you a hypothetical to illustrate your point. So imagine that you had a group of illegal aliens living in Tennessee who crossed the border under Biden, and they had some relatives let's say in Brazil that wanted to come here illegally instead of, again, to your point, paying the smoker, making the trip, everything else, just pay the fee, get the green card, come here. And here's the kicker. Once you have the green card, you're a few short years away from being able to sponsor all your other family members for citizenship. So it really is a, it is a decimation of any immigration control whatsoever. And it's really important that people speak out about this as much as they can, because as you know, from personal experience, most Democrats in Congress just do what they're told by Pelosi and Schumer and do not exercise any independent thought whatsoever. That's right. And this bill, and I think it's important also to note that you're not supposed to be changing law in a mm -hmm. reconciliation budget bill. Yes. There is a process to go through to change law. They know this would never pass 
on yes. its own. So they're putting it in and going to try to get this provision mm -hmm. through in the budget bill. And we want to get the word out on it. Yes. You know, there's also the provision. We've been hearing about this $450,000 payment per person to those that were separated at the border, some of them for a very short period of time, just to take a DNA test and make certain that the child traveling with them was their child, because we have had a problem about 20% mm -hmm. of the children that present at the border are not related to the person. So they have put a billion dollars in here to pay illegal entrants, illegal aliens for trauma, that they have suffered at the southern border. So that is more of your taxpayer dollars nice. that are that are being used. And there. one important point on that, if I may, is that the so you mentioned there's the problem of fake families, and that's a very significant problem, people pretending to be families. And some in the Trump administration cracked down on aggressively that the Biden administration is just letting happen. Uh, but another thing is that, and this is an important point, is that coming into the country illegally is a crime. And when border agents see the law being violated, depending on the specific circumstances they face, what they think the, the concerns are from a law enforcement standpoint, they may refer a case for criminal prosecution. And there's a whole bunch of reasons they may do that. And so by definition, if you're criminally prosecuted for a violation of federal law, your minor relatives are not going to be incarcerated with you in Department of Justice penitentiaries. That would never happen in any setting, immigration or otherwise. And so think about a world in which illegal aliens who go to jail get half a million dollar settlements, but U.S. citizens who go to jail, of course, would never get a penny. That's the, that is the, the definition of putting American citizens last and illegal aliens first. Yes, good point. Well, listen, we are over our time. I could talk to you and with you for hours on end. You're doing so much good work at America First Legal, and Thank we you. really appreciate it. Our viewers and listeners can keep up with you on Twitter at Stephen M. Yes. And yes. we hope that they will, and they'll follow America First Legal. I'm Marsha Blackburn. Look for me on Twitter and Facebook at Marsha Blackburn. Thank you.